Hi hey guys, recently on the internet I saw a few questions on how to integrate Django with Matplotlib and most of the time the answer was to use Char.js instead. I agree with this in a way because Char.js is great and it works nicely with Django and that's one of the reasons I created a Django with Char.js tutorial as one of my first videos released on the channel but Char.js won't give you all the things that Matplotlib with Seaborn bring to the table. In my Django with Data Science course, which by the way is available here on the channel as the light version, so it's without the intro to data science, I presented how to create a user interface in Django with data science libraries for people who even don't know anything about programming. And this includes also the integration with Matplotlib. However, if you want to begin with probably the most easy example, this is exactly what we are going to do in this video. I must warn you though, Django and Matplotlib integration is a bit tricky and it requires using advanced concepts such as Bytes.io and Base64, but the code that we are going to write is reusable and can be used for both Matplotlib and Seaboard charts. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so as usual, let's take a look at what have I done so far. So I started a brand new project called SalesProj and right now I'm in the settings py file of the SalesProj directory. And over here, let's take a look at the installed apps list because it has been extended by a sales. So this is an application that I created for this project purposes. And then if we scroll down to the templates, here I have some additional settings, so I'm telling Django where to look for additional templates and according to those settings I created a templates directory and over here in this templates folder I placed base HTML. Alright, so this is it for the settings PY. Let's take a look at the models PY of sales application. So here uh, we have a class sale with two fields. An item is a models char field and the price is a models float field and I'm returning as a string representation self item, okay? And then I'm registering this class in the admin so when we log in we will be able actually to see it, we will be able to work on it. So this is it for the admin PY. Then if we take a look at the views, here we have just an ordinary function view and it refers to sales main HTML. The sales main HTML inherits from base HTML and we will take a look at this in just a second. But first let's take a look at the base HTML. So this is a very simple template with a title and one blog content. So now if we take a look at main HTML, over here we are inheriting from base HTML in in the blog content we are placing just hello world for now and we also need to remember to put this main view in the URL patterns to register it in the URL patterns and this is what we have done over here and the end result is hello world like this. So now we can proceed and install matplotlib so I'm going to quit the server from running pip install matplotlib press enter and let's wait a few seconds. All right, and then I'm going to go with Python manage py run server. And over here in the sales application, I'm going to put in a file called utils py. And here we will place our helper functions so first of all, I'm going to import mat, matplotlib pyplot as plt. And the next thing is to import base64. And we'll also need to go to IO and from there import bytes IO. All right. And now we can go down and create our first function that is going to be called get graph. Okay, so for now I'm going to put in pass. And then what we are going to do is to create another one called get plot. And this one will take in an x and a y. And over here we are going to set the graph variable to be equal get graph. 
and then we are just going to return the graph. So we are going to use this function over here, but over here we will also need to place in some code that is related to matplotlib. But before we do that, we actually need to focus on this getGraph function, which is going to be a little bit sophisticated because as mentioned before, we are going to use bytes.io and base64. So stay with me. Um, this is a function that you need to write only once and then you can use it in your uh, plots. So the first thing is to create a bytes buffer for the image to be saved. So I'm going to set a variable called buffer and this is going to be bytes.io and as the next step we are going to create the plot with the use of bytes.io object as file like. So I'm going to put in plt save fig I'm going to pass in the buffer and set the format to be PNG. And then we need to set the cursor to the beginning of the stream, so buffer seek 0. And we need to retrieve as the next step the entire content of the file. So I'm going to set another variable called emgpng, and this is going to be buffer get value. Okay, now we need to use base64 encode that uh, simply takes in a bytes-like object. So I'm going to set another variable called graph, and this is going to be base64 and b64 encode, and we need to pass in this uh, bytes-like object, which is emgpng. Now we need to decode the string from base64 to utf8. So in order to do that, I'm going to stay with the graph, uh, graph naming, the graph variable. And here I'm just going to put, overwrite it with graph and decode and pass in utf8, all right? And then we are going to free the memory of the buffer. So buffer close. And finally, we are going to return the graph. Okay, so this is it for this uh, get graph function. This is the most difficult part over here. And if you want to know what is happening between those lines, I encourage you to play around with it. So put in print image PNG, for example, and see what this looks like. And then go to the next line and print graph over here. and print graph over here and then compare these two. This is of course as an example. Okay, but if you don't don't want to dug, dig into details, that's fine too. You can use this function and as mentioned before, it is reusable. So in every project that you are going to do related to data science, you can simply use this get graph and use it in the get plot as we did over here. But before we proceed and do some work over here where we have those three dots, um, let's create some objects. So we need to go to our sales and over here I'm going to add, for example, a TV and I'm going to set the price to 999 and I'm going to save it. And we have no such tables, sales, sale. Okay, so I forgot to run the migrations. Python manage py make migrations and Python manage py migrate and Python manage py run server. Sorry about that. And let's try it one more time. TV 999, save and add another one. Um, let's add a radio. Let's make it 149.90. And also, let's add maybe an iPhone. Let's say it's 120, $1,200 safe. And now we have three objects. All right, so we have three objects with an item and a price. That's very good because we can now proceed and let's go to the views and let's define a query set. So we need to do an import from 
dot models we want to import sale and this is going to be sale objects all and as you saw over here this get plot accepts x and y all right so the x will be the item and the y will be the price so in order to get this x and y we are going to use list comprehension we are going to do the x first so we want to grab the x item for x in the qs and we will do the same for the y but here we are referencing not the item field but the price field for x or let's do it as y y for y price for y in qs and what we need to do next is to import this get get plot function so from dot utils we want to import get plot and use it over here and we will define it in a chart variable we will store it in a chart variable so let's use it over here get plot and let's pass in x and y and we need to pass this chart to our template so chart and then chart to the um, key chart we are assigning this variable chart all right so now here we have our data x and y and we are passing it to the get plot function that we defined in the utils py so let's continue working over here and uh, let's begin by switching the backend and if you want to know more about um, the why do we need to switch the backend it's written really uh, well it's explained really well in the documentation i'm leaving the link in the description but this is something that we need to do in order for having this working so let's begin with switching the backend i'm going to put in plt switch backend and put in agg which stands for anti-grain geometry as the next step let's set the size of our figure so plt figure and here let's put in fig size and for now what i'm going to do is to pass in 10 by 5 we will play all around with this a little bit later and then let's put in the plt title so here we need to provide the title of our chart I'm going to put in sales of items okay and in the next line we are going to create the plot itself so we are just going to create a simple plot where we are passing x and y which we are receiving over here so uh, this is it for the plot let's also change the rotation of the x sticks so we will change the rotation of the items in order to do that let's put in plt x ticks and let's put in the rotation and set it to 45 degrees and maybe it will be nice to know uh, what are the labels so i'm going to begin with the x and i'm going to set the x label to item and i'm going to set the y label to price and then let's just be sure that the image the chart is nicely displayed so i'm going to put in plt tight layout and finally we will have graph and then get graph return graph this should work however we are not done yet because we actually need to go to main html over here in the views py we are having this chart stored in the chart variable we are passing it to the template and over here instead of hello world we will first ask if there is a chart and if this is the case we will simply display it so in order to do that i'm going to write down emg src is equal to data and then image png base 64 comma and over here we will put in chart and save 
and this should do the trick. So let's actually find out if this works or we made some mistake by the way or along the way. I'm going to hit refresh and fix size is not defined. So um, we need to go to the utils, PLT figure, fig size, and here it should be equal, fig size equal to 10 by five. Sorry about that. Let me hit refresh. Matplotlib pipe, pipelot has no attribute. I lost an L over here. I'm going to save it and hit refresh one more time and there is our chart. So this is actually working. And as mentioned before, we can play around with the size over here. So if we put in seven by three, the chart will be smaller. If we want to change the height, let's put in over here, for example, 10. So let's hit refresh and as, as you can see, it's much, much bigger. But I think the optimal size will be something like eight by five, something like this. Let's hit refresh. And yeah, let's leave it like this. Let's finish off over here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, maybe consider uh, doing the Django Data Science course. Hope to see you there. Take care. Have a great day and bye bye.